Hi everyone, my name is Parminder Batra and I'm the CEO of Track and Protect. We understand how important staff safety is, and so today we'll be talking about the Track and Protect Safety Button, where we provide employee safety at the touch of a button. Before we start, it's important to understand that there's various requirements that are around the nationally various jurisdictions, brand requirements that do require hotels to have safety buttons in their hotels. And there are a lot of technologies out there that do this using Wi-Fi, RFID, NFC, Bluetooth, and ultrasonic, ultrasound, and you'll hear so many different technologies. It's enough to make your head spin. It made my head spin. So what we're here to do today is simply to show you what Track and Protect does. And the key things that we found when we developed our product was that hotels, hoteliers, housekeepers said, we want a solution that's easy to use, easy to deploy, does what it's supposed to, lets us know when someone's in distress, but then is also economical and affordable. So that's what we're going to show you today. So let's get started. We are Track and Protect, employee safety at the touch of a button, providing safety and IoT platforms to hotels. We provide different solutions to hotels, which include inventory tracking, room tray tracking, vendor tracking, which also is part of a safety culture to know where your contractors are, and also safety buttons. Our technology is proprietary technology. We use Bluetooth technology. And just to put it simply, we use the same Bluetooth that you use in your homes, where you connect your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. But what happens is, in that case, there's a continuous stream of data that flows between your phone and the speaker that allows the speaker to play the music. What we've done is taken a different protocol that BLE Bluetooth Low Energy provides, which allows for small packets of data to be sent from the button to the speaker, so to speak, which is our hub, and allow for that communication to happen. The benefit of that is because the packets are so small, that speaker, or our hub in this case, can listen to thousands of devices at the same time and use very little energy. And because it's low packets, the Bluetooth device, then in this case, the safety button, uses very little power, so which allows it to last longer. People usually ask, you know, what is the size of it? Well, as you can see, based on the palm of my hand, it's about the size of the palm of my hand. It's relatively small, but then you'll see that there's logos of Ruckus, Cisco Meraki, and Aruba there. And what that is that you can actually eliminate, reduce or eliminate the need for our track and protect hubs if you have the infrastructure in place to have Aruba, Cisco Meraki, or Ruckus access points in your hotels. And where there are certain models, we can leverage those to actually completely eliminate our hubs where possible. So the way our solution works is, going back to that Bluetooth technology of the phone and the speaker, here what happens is the button emits a signal to the receiver, and the receiver can be the hub and the ruckus access point, as you recall, Aruba and, or Cisco Meraki, and basically those are listening devices. They listen and they push that information into the cloud. The Wi-Fi bandwidth is not affected because we're always uploading. And then it's actually very simple. They do this unbeknownst to you and they do it quietly. Everything, all the hard work that is done in the cloud and where that happens, we are able to provide the information to you through multiple means, whether it's over a web portal, the mobile app and so on. And so you'll see a demo of that here today. Another question I get asked all the time is, what if our Wi-Fi goes out? Or what if the Wi-Fi is spotty? Well, no problem. What we have is what we call LTE failover. In case of where your Wi-Fi may go out, we can put in one LTE failover where we're, our hubs will then say, I can't communicate. And the LTE router will then switch on automatically and be able to push all of that information into the cloud. We're still able to get that information. We're still able to deliver the service. This is not rerouting the guest internet Wi-Fi to be clear. It reroutes our hub's traffic into the cloud and gets the information we need so we can provide you with the, safe, the safety platform that you have. In another case where the Wi-Fi is spotty or for resort properties where you have large open spaces and it's how do we get coverage? Well, we can use LTE routers. We partner with Verizon 
to be able to use those routers where our hubs then connect to those routers and then we can still provide the same experience. And one of the other things I get asked is, how many of these do you need? I mean, do I have to put one every room? That depends on your build. So your hotel bill will determine whether you need one per room. If you are a hotel that's a heritage hotel that's largely concrete and it's a bunker of sorts where it inhibits all signal from leaving the room, well then yes, we will have to put in one per room in order to make sure you have adequate coverage. But if you're a hotel with brick or other materials, generally speaking, we can go every other room. But then in very rare cases where it's a, it's a small hotel with a standard build, then we can go every third room. So for that, we actually do look at floor plans. We may do a site survey to be able to determine how many you need and where they go. So then it comes down to the safety buttons because now we've talked about the infrastructure that goes behind it. Now, how does it work and what does it do? Well, with track and protect safety buttons, the big thing is that it's one click activation. These are our safety buttons. And as you'll see, I have mine on a lanyard. You can wear it on a lanyard, you can wear it on a master key, and we recommend that. So when we designed this system, we actually went to hoteliers and housekeepers and said, you know, what do you like and what don't you like? And what we found is when it has a red button in the middle, people felt afraid of carrying it because they said it attracts attention. The other thing is if it has sound, now sound alarms, there is a debate going on whether sound alarms are better or not. But the general consensus is, and in some, case, in some cases, some jurisdictions have said, you cannot have sound alarms because it actually can aggravate the perpetrator. So what we've done is we've simply provided a silent alarm here. It looks like an aqua swap, you just simply carry it. And the reason it's so light is you can put it on a master key. There's no requirement to ha now have another step where a housekeeper has to check it out in the morning. And we don't do pairing because pairing can be broken. That's a fundamental thing. Regardless of other issues that may happen with pairing, the first and foremost is our clients who've previously had such technology found that halfway during the day, the pairing broke between the two devices, between the safety button and the phone, which meant that now the safety button wouldn't work. To put that into perspective, if you're using your phone and you're using your Bluetooth headphones or a speaker, you may find throughout the day, at some point in the day, it just falls off. And it's actually easy to hack. You can inundate your device and iPod Touch with Bluetooth requests such that the pairing falls off. So those are the vulnerabilities that happen with pairing and that's why we have not designed intentionally, not designed our system to require pairing. It's one click activation. There's no three buttons, there's no three clicks, there's no multiple buttons because when you're panicking and when we talk to the housekeepers, their thing was, I simply want to press a button and know that help is on its way. So it's one click activation and our buttons then give exact room location with over 93% of the time. What that means is there's no technology that's 100%. If someone says that, well, I would like to challenge that. Because technology is subject to who's in the room, how many humans, how many screens, what's, the, what's inside a room, what's happening around the room and so on, and how fast is someone moving. So in that case, you know, in, what we say is and what we've tested is we're over 95%, but we definitely can say that we're over 93% of the time, we can get you into the exact room where the incident is occurring. In addition, we were one of the first ones to do this where if someone was moved, because that came up as a concern. What happens if I run? Because if I'm in danger, the first thing I'm going to do is leave. I'm going to run. Will you find me? And they found that other solutions didn't provide that, so we provided that. Now, many solutions provide that as well. So what we do is if the person moves or is moved, we can update that location and provide you with that. And lastly, our solution creates an incident record, which you'll see. Well, here you'll notice that the room says 102 and the hub is on. I've actually got it plugged on. The green light is flashing, which tells you that it's working and we've connected it here for the purposes of our demo. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to show you my phone. There you go. You can see on my screen that there's no alerts right now. 
and we're going to go into the app here. And the reason I want to show you the app here is that, you know, a lot of times you have to log into an app to be able to get the alerts because again, our goal is to take friction out of the system. So if a responder comes into work, they shouldn't have to remember that, oh, I have to log in in order to be able to get the alerts. They should simply just be able to get the alerts. So we're going to exit out of here. And as you can see, there's no alerts, no notifications. And we're going to lock, well, I won't lock the phone, but you'll be able to see. So here I'll press the button and I'll press it until the green light goes on, which is about three seconds. Now you'll see that the system is working and you can see the message came through. As you can see, we have incident number 14548 here and location confirmation in progress. So we're able to open that up and we see that there's two SOS alerts. The goal of that is to have people become aware there's an incident and they need to leave. So as you're walking out, you get another one that says approximate location room 102. If you recall, the hub that we're using here, we've labeled it as room 102. Now then it says confirm location room 102. And that's doing within every 12 seconds or so where it's giving you that update. And if I was to leave here and go to another area, it would actually come up as updated location room wherever I am then. So here, now what the responder would do is the responder would go into the app and basically log in and say, okay, let's look at what the active alerts are. Here we can see that it's in room 102. It's been going on for one minute and which button it is. So we're going to end the alert and we're going to say, this is a demo test and we have, we're going to end the alert right here. And then basically now what we can do is we can go in and we can add pictures. We can do various things. So we'll add a picture of the camera and <laughs> I've got staff here that you'll be able to see. And you've got pictures that have been uploaded in real time. And we can add further notes because we can say that, you know, Perminder was on camera testing and you'll be able to see that I'll save that and that note will come up within seconds. So these are real time notes being made and someone can be off site, someone could be out of the country and still be able to log in and look at the incident report. And another thing they'll see is how long it lasted and fun fact, they'll be actually be able to see, okay, well, was it a false alarm? Was it a major injury, minor injury? a test or other. So in this case, we'll just say it was a test and we'll hit done and you'll see that that's been categorized. So now you can use that search and at the end of the year, see how many tests have you done? How many false alarms have you had? How many minor injuries, major injuries, assaults, and then be able to factor those into your training and into other things such as insurance and so on. So here now we can see the list of everything. We can see history, we can see insights, how many days without incident, what was the average time to respond, who's the recipient, do they get the alert 24 seven or do they only get it for a certain shift? Here it's just me with my cell phone number, but you can actually have multiple people receiving alerts and we don't charge by people, we charge based on the number of safety buttons you get so you can actually have people receiving alerts so that you can have different people receiving them for different shifts and so on. But most importantly, what you saw was that you can get the alerts in multiple ways. You can get them through SMS. You can get them through push notification. There is also email notification, which we didn't show because it doesn't work in an emergency. When you're receiving something urgent, you don't want to receive that by email but that's more for the HR people to know that something happened and they can follow along. And then there's a desktop alert. And the, this is great for small security teams or perhaps with no security team where they want to install that at their front desk desktops and make sure that someone is always responding. And also when you have a security team, let's be honest, they're not always looking at the screen in front of them or you may have one or two people looking at the screen and not everyone. So how do you get the alert? This is how you get the alert at the front desk desktop. It's pretty obnoxious, but that's the goal of it is to get people's attention and have them respond. So to summarize, you know, we do provide the exact room location. We provide multiple means of having the alerts come to you and your staff. 
Um, one thing I didn't talk about was that this button actually stays on for 30 minutes. So as I mentioned, it gives you the updated location for when someone moves. Because we're not tracking people when this is not being used, so it's, when it's not being pressed, it's actually in a deep sleep mode. So when, it, when someone presses it, it act, it's activated. It's activated for 30 minutes to allow you 30 minutes of tracking to be able to find that person and provide assistance. And then also engineered simplicity. From an engineering perspective, we're simply going into rooms and plugging these in where necessary. It takes us approximately seven to 10 minutes to install this in a room. So you don't have to take a room out of commission and our installers are really just ready to go. They're provisioned and they go in, they install, they test and they leave. So even from that perspective, it is easy to deploy. So people ask us why track and protect? What's so special about track and protect? Well, first of all, there's folks out there that have LTE buttons, they have different buttons, and it's hard to determine, well, how many of each do I need? And are there people using the handheld device? Are there people not using it? What if I have a category that's broadened because the jurisdiction changed its laws? Well, in our case, you simply you have the infrastructure deployed, you don't need different categories of buttons, and you also don't need to redo the infrastructure. At any point that law changes, and that's happened where City of Chicago only requires housekeepers and those conducting inventory to be required, provided with the safety button, whereas the state of Illinois requires you to provide them to a much wider category of individuals. So now the question is, City of Chicago, who do they comply with? At this time, it's very clear it is the housekeepers and those conducting inventory. But if that category was ever to be expanded, they would be able to just simply go out, purchase more of these and deploy that. They wouldn't need to buy more handheld devices. They wouldn't need to go out and buy another category of buttons. They would simply be able to do that. So it's really about not just ease of deploy today, but being future friendly as well. Then the other thing is powered hubs. There's others, technologies that do use similar means, which is having proximity beacons or um, repeaters and so on, which are battery operated. And what that means is that you now have to have a stock of batteries and also be able to change them. And if you've got two, three hundred of these, that's labor cost that needs to be taken into consideration as you deploy. Whereas with ours, they're powered and these buttons last two to three years. So again, they are water resistant. Our new buttons will be waterproof and we simply change out the button. The good thing about that is we give you the battery life and then when they come to the end, you simply replace the button. So there's no changing battery or having to now pay someone to sit there and change the battery out for you. Also, it is a standalone solution. There's solutions out there that require you to have another solution to be able for them to get location. We do not, we integrate, we absolutely leverage augmented messaging. So through Hot Sauce, we can use their messaging platform to be able to get the message out, or to, out to a wider team members, wider groups, but we do not require the integration to be able to give you location. So that sets us apart because that's not something you have to take into budget. In addition that to being that, we're also an integrated solution so we can reduce the capex for hotels by the fact that we can integrate with Raqqa, Cisco, Meraki and Aruba to be able to leverage your existing infrastructure that you've already invested in and be able to provide the same experience. And as I mentioned, we do integrate with platforms such as Hot Sauce as well. And last thing, as I said, we are a forward-looking solution. So we do provide that flexibility into the future, whether there's jurisdictional changes or legal changes. So these are just, a, this is a summary of some of our partners that we work with, as you can see, and we're continuing to grow. We've added Telconet, Sonify, and others that we continue to provide the solution with to be able to add to our solution. So with our solution, we've had amazing response from our customers. And last year, when Chicago was facing a deadline, we were able to capture over 45% of the Chicago market. And nationally, we can't say the same thing because this is just exploding nationally right now. But we are a preferred vendor with Peninsula globally in deploying our entire IoT platform, as well as a qualified vendor for choice and really a preferred vendor with other brands as well. 
So we do provide, going back to this, that we provide safety button solutions, we provide room tray tracking. So now if you have a dirty room tray in the hallway, imagine getting an automated alert to your food and beverage team that says that there's a room that needs a, a room tray that needs to be picked up as opposed to having to walk the halls to find it. Asset tracking, being able to find things when you need them instead of going around and looking for them. And lastly, vendor tracking. It's the allowing you to track contractors when they're on your property, knowing when they were there, when they left, how long they were there, what areas did they access, and did they go into any restricted areas, and also be able to set alerts if they're in an area you don't want them to be in. We are a solution that is easy to use, easy to deploy, affordable, economical, and future-friendly for your purposes. So to get more information about our product, about your jurisdictional requirements or brand mandates, please feel free to contact us at sales at track and protect. That's T-R-A-K-N, the word protect.com.